community this is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing so if that's your sort of thing stick around so I'm excited today because I noticed this morning um, on my dashboard on YouTube that I have nearly 2,000 people watching me which is incredible um, I am so grateful to everybody that subscribed so far and has come back to watch my videos and message me and left comments to say that they enjoy them it's so amazing for me and really has given me a massive boost this year. Um, I will talk more about that in a minute. But first order of the day is my competition that I held to um, give away embroidery hoops. One of the embroidery hoops has gone off to its new owner, but the other one hasn't been claimed. So um, if you are watching today, um, this embroidery hoop that says sewing forever, housework whenever, which very much sums my life up most of the time, was won by somebody called little sick yeah don't know how you pronounce that anyway if that's you please get in contact send me an email um, pop me a comment below um, uh, private message me on Instagram just let me know um, your address so that I can get that out to you because it would be a shame not to give that to somebody um, out there and say thank you so that was the first order of the day the second order of the day is some exciting news so um, <clears throat> I don't tend to talk too much about my private life, <clears throat> purely because my husband tells me off. Um, but I, um, I don't know whether you guys are aware, I have been an intensive care sister in neonates for the best part of 16 years now. And um, this year has been really, really hard. I've had a brush with um, PTSD, which anybody that's ever suffered from um, such a debilitating mental health condition will understand that um, it sort of really changes your outlook on things and I've had a full course of cognitive behavioural therapy to help and through the course of that I've really come to realise that actually I, um, I'm ready for a change, I'm ready to do something different, I want to be a happy person and a relaxed person and um, enjoy my life a bit more um, and I've really loved uh, working in neonates for as long as I have um, but sometimes you have to admit that the things that you're good at aren't always good for you or your family or your friends or your parents or anybody else that knows you so um, I'm excited to be starting a new job after Christmas in the new year and um, it will hopefully make things a little bit easier around here with the family. Um, they're all, oh, I've got three children. They're all crazy crackers. Um, it's chaos around here most days. My five-year-old went to school with no underwear on the other day. So anyway, I've come to the decision that something's got to change and making a change is a huge decision. But once you've done it, you feel great. So, um, yeah, so a little bit of news from my private life. Anyway, moving on to sewing, which is what you guys are interested in. Um, I have been making some Christmas presents this year. Every year I have all these massive plans for all these things I'm gonna make and the time dribbles away and then all you, all of a sudden it's like two, 10 days, two weeks till Christmas and you realize actually I'm, I'm never gonna get all this stuff done. So um, <clears throat> I'm really pleased, excuse my throat, <clears throat> I'm still suffering from that cold I had in the last video. Um, I have made a couple of bits. The person who they're for doesn't usually watch my videos, but Laura, if you're watching, turn it off now because I don't want to spoil the surprise. But I can't not show you guys this pattern because I have made four, maybe four of these so far. So, first of all, the book it's from is called little bags and purses and it's by Saskia Abel so I don't know so if you guys have seen this one before I just ordered it from Amazon a while ago and um, the RRP is $7.99 but I think I didn't pay that much for it and it's full of really beautiful little projects um, bag making projects and I haven't done a great deal of bag making so I was quite keen to have a go the first project on the first page is just this most gorgeous little um, clutch I suppose you'd call it but actually it's more like a makeup bag um, 
yeah, makeup, um, not really a handbag, not really a sort of going out bag, more of a toiletries makeup kind of bag. And um, I wanted to make those as gifts for the women in my life. So this is one of them. And if you uh, follow me on Instagram, you will have seen how many of these I've made so far and they're all different. So I have made this one out of some green, sort of sage green spotty cotton. And then this really, really cute uh, cactus cotton that I got from, made by Lucy when I went to one of her um, fabric and fizz evenings, it was called. It was really good fun. She had a little sale on before Christmas. Um, <clears throat> so I've got one of my prim snaps on the front there, which I also got from Lucy. And I put a pom-pom trim on this one all the way around, but I've used rickrack like in the picture. So I'll show you the picture again. Uh, 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 here we are. So you can see around the, um, what do you call that bit of a bag? Flap? Around the flap, they've got rickrack. And I actually think I quite like the rickrack. So I've bought more rickrack because I have not done with this pattern. I've made four so far. My um, eldest daughter got the prototype because that didn't go quite according to plan. If you've never made a bag before, it can be quite tricky figuring out how to do it because the lining and the outer and the flap, they're all out of different patterns. So you obviously need to get them all in the right order, in the right direction before you <clears throat> sew the whole thing together and then do what's called bagging out where you pass the whole project through a small hole in one of the seams and um, the first one did not go well. Uh, I put the flap on, I think I ended up with the lining on the outside of the bag and the flap was on backwards but it still looked cute, I mean it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to and it wasn't anywhere near good enough to give away as a present so my eldest has got that as a pencil case at school and she's really pleased with it. But um, I don't have any others to show you because I've wrapped one of the others up. Um, but yeah, so I can recommend this beautiful book full of lovely, lovely, lovely gifts. And um, it's a bit mind boggling, but I think if you've made a bag before, you'll probably find it very easy. But there's loads of things in here. There's like pencil cases and yeah, I'm definitely going to be making more stuff from this book. So uh, if you're interested in bag making, grab a copy <clears throat> or put it on your Christmas list. So the next thing I've been doing as gifts is buying really cheap diaries. So this is just a plain diary um, with, I think it's a page, oh yeah, a week in a, uh, on the pages. So, so um, yeah, just your standard sort of hardback diary. This one was 80 pence from um, a place called In Excess, which sells um, excess stock from places so uh, there's nothing wrong with the stuff it just is extra to what people want I guess so they sell it off so 80p for a diary and then <coughs> excuse me sorry about the coughing I have la 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 covered this diary with fabric the same cactuses and I've hand embroidered the name on there and yeah, you can see it's uh, the diary slots inside the cover like this, so it can be taken off, but then it doesn't really matter uh, what the diary is like underneath because it's now a beautiful diary and it's personalized. And yeah, I'm hoping she's really gonna enjoy that. So those two go really nicely together. And um, I've also filled the little bag up with some nail polish and what else did I put in there? Oh, some essential oils. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with those. So, what's my next project? <clears throat> I feel like I've got a billion things I want to do and no time to do them. But every year, I move on to Christmas stuff. Every year, I um, have a tradition that I not uh, I make pajama bottoms. So. People um, have Christmas pyjama traditions, don't they? And ours in this house involves me buying some cheap um, raglan type tops and making pyjama bottoms. And then the kids use fabric pens to decorate their t-shirts. So I'll just show you. 
Um, this is just a plain raglan with, I mean, I normally go for just white ones, but they didn't have any in the right sizes this year. So they've just got green sleeves, these ones. Um, these are from Primark. They are, well, this one was £1.80. So yeah, it makes me feel bad buying stuff that I know has been just knocked out at 100 miles an hour. But you know what, this time of year, I just don't have time and for £1.80 there's absolutely no way you could make a raglan t-shirt and if it was something that the kids were going to wear um, night in you know for weeks and weeks on end and I wanted it to last then I probably would make my own like I have done previously but if um, if it's just a Christmas a couple of weeks of wear then I um, like to keep these with their drawings on just as a little memento so um, unfortunately Ikea don't sell these anymore and every year I buy a new packet and I noticed last year they don't sell them anymore which makes me sad because they're really good fabric pens but you can get fabric pens online so um, you can see it comes they, they used to come with all these lovely colours and then what we do is one afternoon, usually when the kids have broken up from school, we all sit around the dining room table. Um, I've made their pyjama bottoms by then and they um, have their t-shirt each. I put a piece of cardboard inside to stop the fabric pens from leaching through to the back. And then they just draw Christmas pictures all over their pyjamas. And um, yeah, it's kind of cute. I don't have that many Christmas traditions, but that's one that I really enjoy. And I'll just show you the... So um, <clears throat> the other good thing about having lots of children is there's lots of hand-me-downs. So um, I'm not making new pyjama bottoms for two of them because um, the pyjama bottoms from the eldest now fit the middle child and the middle child's pyjama bottoms fit the bottom child. So uh, I'm not in the habit of wasting uh, fabric or, you know. So um, I've just bought a little bit of this. I think it's just plain old 100% cotton actually from Fabricland. You can see it probably needs an iron. It's got lovely snowflakes all over it and it was relatively inexpensive. I think I paid probably about 350 maybe? Maybe 399 a metre? Um, yeah and it's just going to make a really nice little pair of um, pyjama bottoms and I got I think, how much did I buy? maybe a metre and a half of that, so um, if there's any left over, I might make myself something Christmassy. So yeah, there's that. And then my last project, I'm going out with a really dear friend of mine on, on Saturday night and we're gonna go out for dinner, and we're gonna have drinks and just generally chat and have a great time and um, I really want to wear something different and make something to wear. So um, you remember in my last video, if you watched it and if you haven't, go back to my channel list and check it out. I made the Nina Lee Southbank sweater in my last video and it turned out to be a little bit too, ba uh, not baggy, uh, roomy around sort of the waist area. So I just wanted to make another one slightly smaller um, it doesn't, it doesn't make it unwearable, it just means it's not quite as um, flattering around the waist as I would, quite, uh, as I would like it. So <clears throat> this is the pattern here, Nina Lee Southbank sweater. Um, it's a really lovely pattern. Head back to my previous video if you want to hear a pattern review. What I'm uh, planning for this one is, I'm really loving um, navy blue at the moment. So I have purchased some navy blue Ponty Roma, just bog standard Ponty. It's really quite soft. I've washed it already in preparation. I think I got two meters of this um, because it's always really handy to have a little bit extra. I often use Ponty for sleeves and neckbands and cuffs and um, all of that kind of stuff. And if you have a variety of colors in your stash, then you've always got something that goes with something else and navy is usually quite a good colour for that. Um, and what I plan to do with this navy ponty, which was 4 99 a metre from Fabricland, um, and they do have an online, if you've got a Fabricland store near you, you can order online and have it sent to the store to pick it up. Or I think they do send it out by post as well. Um, luckily for me, 
um, the ladies in there went to the warehouse to get this because they'd run out of um, actual Ponty on a bolt. So they do often have it in the warehouse if they don't have it in stock in the store. Um, so what I plan with this is I'm going to make a smaller sized South Bank sweater and I want a Christmas dress but I'm not really um, a girly girl. I mean I, I, uh, I like dresses but I always feel much more comfortable in not uh, you know slightly less sort of flouncy more sort of masculine dresses I suppose if that makes sense so like today I'm wearing my Tilly and the Buttons um, Cleo pinafore dress and I've been living in this with a roll neck sweater underneath it I just stand up um, you guys will have probably if you've been watching me for a while seen me wearing this before or talking about it before um, so this Christmas dress is not going to be your standard Christmas sparkly, twinkly, like sequin dress. It's going to be a nod towards Christmas, but I want to be able to wear it again um, after the season's over. So what I'm going to do is I've used my mum's um, brother scanning cut machine to cut a um, star. Um, and what I plan to do is applique a uh, grey probably star, I've got some grey ponty left over from my Tilly and the Buttons Zadie um, so I'm going to applique the star onto the front of my Southbank sweater just like that, um, I'm hoping, I mean I've never, I, I don't think I've appliqued have I appliqued on jersey? I've made my son something with um, an applique on the front and that worked out okay. So I think I'm just going to use my usual um, applique paper, you know the stuff that's iron on, that's um, double sided so that you can stick your motif on the front first with the iron so that it doesn't move around when you then go to sew it on. And the nice thing about jersey is it doesn't fray, so I don't need to worry about the edges. I can just either do a running stitch or hand stitch. I might just hand stitch it on. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping that would be a nice sort of understated nod towards Christmas, but still be able to wear it, you know, during January and um, in October next year. And and I've seen lots of um, sweaters with stars on and stuff, so I think that'll look quite nice. So yeah, that's I think that's everything I've got to talk to you about today. I'm sorry if I seem a bit like, because I am excited and I feel like the New Year's bringing change and I've got so many plans. I, I really want a sewing studio. Um, so I am starting to think about how I can achieve that. Um, yeah, so the world is my oyster, people. Stay tuned. And um, I look forward to seeing you next time, hopefully, with a dress. And it may not be that long away because, like I said, I have to make this by Saturday. So I'm cracking on with that today. Thanks very much for watching. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and press the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, like I said, thank you to everyone that's come back this week and I'll see you next time. Bye!